uh, welcome to the uh, second session of my speech. Uh, and I, I hope you, you have also the slides running on. Um, okay, let's start instantly because uh, the, these slides are too many and uh, I, I hope we can cover within 10 minutes. Uh, so, um, I hope everyone is doing well and okay and I hope you have enjoyed your Dev Summit till now and I hope all the sessions or any of the sessions that are interesting for you have fulfilled your uh, requirements or what you had expected. And don't forget to reach out to all the speakers later through a Slack or by other means, uh, if you have any further questions. Uh, okay, let's start. Uh, my name is Farhang. Uh, I'm PX4 Ambassador for two years now. And uh, here we go. This is uh, this talk is about actually my uh, thesis, uh, my uh, master's uh, thesis, that I have uh, I have implemented it using a PX4 based uh, drone. So uh, thanks thanks to um, PX4 and Linux Foundation for arranging this and accepting my talk. Uh, all right, let's start. Um, Let's jump into what the whole uh, idea is about and uh, what's going on, uh, how we came to this this idea to implement such a thing. Uh, there's a paper as uh, which, which uh, caught my eyes. Uh, in that paper, which I have given the uh, reference at the bottom of the slide, uh, they, they had implemented a uh, localization for a quadcopter. Um, with uh, by, by using uh, some feature extraction and uh, by using image processing. Um, so the idea was uh, that everything was in simulation there uh, and the idea was really basic and raw. Uh, so this caught our eyes and uh, we came to the point that we can uh, we can use uh, deep learning. We can replace deep learning uh, for uh, localization. And uh, we can also use a Markov algorithm uh, to implement this. So uh, yeah, here we go. We came up to 99% confidence after each localization we had. I will tell you how we did it uh, later on. And uh, yeah, that's it. The whole idea is about having deep learning, taking care of localization of a quadcopter, which has no idea where it is. Technically, in robotics, we call this as a kidnap robot. Uh, for those of you interested in robotics, you may have an idea about this term. Uh, so uh, let's see uh, what the system architecture is. Uh, the whole arch architecture is that there is a companion computer uh, connected to our flight controller. And this companion computer, which is Raspberry Pi 4 here, runs Mavros and as well as the pattern detection application. Uh, this guy is connected to uh, Google HTTP accelerator and one simple RGB camera and also real sense camera, which I will tell you why, uh, with one Pixhawk for Mini and uh, it is connected through UDP to ground station, which that ground station is also equipped with MavSDK and QGC. Uh, the feed, the video feed uh, is uh, being consumed by Raspberry Pi and for our uh, also pattern detection algorithm in RTPS format. So everything has to be real time and uh, you, you are not uh, you are not able to process them through UDP because uh, this uh, this pattern detection needs real time processing. So uh, the real hardware is actually one Holybro QAV250 kit and uh, also, you can see in details on uh, right side uh, how we have implemented. As you can see, we have a simple USB camera, RGB camera, uh, one HTPU accelerator, which I hope I can show you here. Yes, one HTPU device, which I have it. This is small. And uh, as well as uh, one Raspberry Pi. Um, so, uh, how, how we did it, technically, before we jump into that, we have chosen MobileNet SSD architecture for pattern detection. Uh, 
as you know, SSD architecture is one of the uh, one of the latest and fastest uh, network architectures, and uh, also the documentation for this for training this uh, network is readily available on uh, Google's uh, Google's TPU. Uh, this Google TPU is called Coral Coral Board. If you search for it, uh, you can find it out. Google Coral Board are uh, TPU based uh, processors that uh, they, they, you can train them using TensorFlow. Uh, so uh, for those of you who are interested, you can uh, go to the uh, referenced paper I have mentioned underneath, and you can read more about SSD architecture. Uh, the whole idea that is that in each scene, uh, let's say from a 300 by 300 image, we can have 8,732 uh, predictions. So this is one of the fastest and uh, the, the speed we are, uh, we can be able to detect these uh, patterns that I will talk th talk about them uh, is acceptable. Uh, all right, uh, what is Markov algorithm? Markov, Markov algorithm is a probabilistic algorithm that you start initial sound and your robot has no idea where it is. And uh, as you go by sensor readings and uh, by your, uh, let's say, by your movements, uh, which we call them like odometry inputs, uh, you are updating your robot belief about where it is. So at the beginning, you, you might have an equal distribution uh, above all places your robot might be. And then as you go, you are updating your weights regarding where your uh, robot is located. Um, how we have done the uh, data preparation and whole procedure. Uh, we have six patterns. Let me jump into the pattern map first, yes. Uh, we have uh, six different patterns, uh, which means six different classes. What we have done, we have taken, let's say, 20, 30 images from each one. And uh, we have uh, fed them, we have augmented them, and we have edited some of them. So. This means that we have expanded our network to up to nearly 500 photos. We have fed them to our network to be trained. And uh, with uh, 5,000 steps, uh, we have uh, started training them with SSD v1 uh, just by following the documentation from uh, Coral and uh, using TF1. So uh, rotation and augmentation a bit have been applied to the patterns. So we can increase the uh, accuracy. And uh, th these are the samples of edited data fed to it. So I have just taken these photos from the ground simply. This is what the quadcopter can see by uh, using a down downward facing camera. Uh, I have just fed them, let's say, by my uh, phone camera. And then I have augmented them. And uh, I have rotated them, rotated them a bit. I have added some noise. You can see on right side, salt and pepper noise. And I have changed brightness. So I have expanded my data. You can see here the loss graphs and the precision graphs that after like 1,000 steps, we have kind of converged to what we wanted from our train network. Also learning rate nearly zero. So let's say even if we had like uh, trained for thousand steps, it was again idea was the same. So the magic here is that uh, since the quadcopter doesn't have that much time to stay on each pattern uh, to say which pattern is this, and since we don't have that much of precision with this uh, with this TPU, uh, we have uh, put our threshold to between fifty or sixty percent only, and what we have added. Uh, by using majority voting in each three seconds, which means like 90, 91 frames, as we have mentioned here, uh, we come to a decision uh, which pattern we are on top of. So let's say within three seconds, the drone can decide which pattern is this because it has like, uh, you have vibration, you have some rotations maybe, heading might be lost, so you need to decide. So this was the method we have added, and you can see after like 90 frames that I have, I have followed, I have followed uh, odd numbers here. Uh, you can see how the decision is made, for example, for pattern four and six. 
Uh, and you can see here the threshold and the confidence for the detected pattern, pattern six is like 79%. Is not that much acceptable. It has to be more than 95% or 99%. Uh, but on the left side, you can see the number, which is the final decision, and that is fixed. So this is coming from our majority voting decision making. So here is one example from that map that I showed you here. For example, from the second uh, top second on the left from number two, if we start moving the drone, so we will start hovering on top of first one. And uh, <clears throat> since we have three patterns with number two, the chances are the drone is on either of these three at the beginning. We have no idea. On the next one, since we are 100% sure that if you are on each of these patterns called number two, we are 100% sure that our decision made is 100% correct. So we have no noise from our sensor reading, which is a part of Markov. That, that's why Markov is there. So on the next pattern, we say that we have only one condition. We are jumping from two to five to right side. How this is ha how this is happening and how we know that by using MavSDK, we are giving the commands and following through each pattern. So let's say we are giving commands like set points, like 50 centimeter, 50 centimeter, and we are jumping on mm, top of each pattern, staying for three seconds, and then jumping to the next one till we come to the final decision. And there might be one case that you can see in the middle, we have two, three to five. And uh, that might be a bit tricky, but again, even for that one, after third one, we can come to a final decision, which is like 100%. Uh, confidence. So what we mentioned, we proposed a method for localizing a quadcopter uh, using Markov algorithm and uh, we have used deep learning for that. Um, so uh, navigation and also inferences, everything have been done on the vehicle, nothing is done on the ground station and uh, we have used a simple Raspberry Pi and pattern detection by using Google HTPU device and also the quantized data uh, as you may be aware for uh, for TPU to be able to detect and do the object detection or classification you have to have your data quantized so future works might be more patterns more complex patterns to increase the precision and also comparison with concurrent solutions that we have UWB or other localization methods for indoors and uh, also bigger map and implementing other machine learning networks. Um, finally, uh, I would be thankful to my supervisor through the uh, whole way for this and giving the ideas. Uh, you know about me, you can research about me and information are available everywhere. Uh, references followed were not that much, like I have followed MavSDK, the export documentations and uh, Coral that you can follow up yourself. And that's it. Uh, we come to the end. If you have any questions, please feel free to share. Let me see. Thirty frames per second, Julian. If if you mean this, uh, it's thirty frames per second, and it's in real time. My detections are in real time, but on top of each pattern, we wait three seconds to come to a final conclusion. So are you going to share the code that you are using? Great work. Yeah, um, the code that I'm using, uh, I will. Um, but I don't know what you mean from the whole code. If you mean the training procedure, that is clear. That is open. It's available there. Uh, but if you mean about TF lights and outputs, yes, I will share them. Um, I'm just waiting for my, uh, let's say, uh, for some process to be finalized and uh, for code to be clean and neat. And then uh, I would be uh, releasing sure. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any other questions, I think we are, our time is up. Yes, you missed that. Um, because this this uh, this method was new, I have one minute only. This method was new at the beginning. Um, we had to have a stable hover. 
so uh, we are we were not sure like if we can have control over the drone or not and uh, I had to use that for uh, stabilized hovering that's why I had to use uh, t265 here yeah that was the reason I completely forgot that thank you for mentioning all right everyone if you had more questions you can reach me out on a slack and uh, I would be Happy to answer. Thank you.